Where's Bobo? Okay. Come here, Bobo. Everyone needs to see the Bobo. Hey, people out there. Wait, how would he talk? Hello, people out there. <laughs> He doesn't want me to hold him. <laughs> He's like, Mom. Bowen sends his love to all. So embarrassing, Mom. Yeah. Okay. So, look, today what I want to do is talk about how you can take basically any old exercise that you've been doing and make it a little bit different by changing your stance or your setup or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to be shooting a bunch of these videos. So, you'll see kind of maybe how I overlap some of this content. Um, and hopefully give you some ideas to use at home. So this is a strategy that I use with my clients as well as myself. Um, stances and different setups for, for various exercises is something I've been tweaking forever, it seems like. But I will say that in the past year of my delving into uh, the dynamic variable resistance training, um, DVRT and lift certifications, um, Josh Hinkin, Hink, ugh, I can't talk. Josh Hinkin and De uh, Jessica Bento and everyone else in their camp. Um, it's really made me appreciate how such a simple concept can make exercises more powerful. So the cool thing about this for you guys is that if you're stuck at home without a lot of like um, a lot of, of equipment options, you can create more load, so to speak, on the body by uh, uh, changing your stance as well as the loading position of the weight that you have on the body. I'm going to save that for a separate video. Maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Um, so what do I mean by stance? So in a nutshell, just a basic bilateral stance would be feet parallel to one another, typically. Um, hip width or slightly wider. From here, if you want to get a little crazy, you can go to a wide stance for certain exercises. This creates a wider base, okay? So I like to use this uh, setup for bent over rows. I'll do it with band rotations, things like that. Um, but from a basic bilateral stance, the progression that we use is that you're gonna go from here and then go to what I call a sprinter or I didn't make this up. I think someone just pulled up outside. So cut it. Or wait, maybe not. Okay, just kidding. Just kidding. I was like, if I've got a guest, pop it in here to wave at me. Um, okay, so we're still going. So bilateral stance. Um, so from this position, we do a lot of stuff. You can curl, you can overhead press, lateral raises. We squat here, okay? So then from here, what we can do is go to a sprinter stance, which this has become popularized by the DVRT crew. So essentially what you're gonna do is take that bilateral stance or sprinter stance, and you're gonna slide one foot back so that the ball of the foot is in line with your heel of the forward foot. Correct, Shannon? Yes. Okay. So then this back foot, the foot that slid back, what we want to make to make sure that we do is we keep the heel up. So zoom in on that. I always say it's like you're wearing a stiletto. Yeah. I have worn stilettos in my lifetime, Look believe it or not. Look at those calves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep it up like that. A common error is that people just start to let it drop. Okay, so you yeah. want to make sure that that stays up. So the cool thing about this stance is that it basically, like when we're using it, one of my favorite things to do with this stance is to do a, a sprinter stance squat. So the cool thing about that is that it shifts the loading to uh, the forward leg a little bit more. So we make it more 60% load on this forward leg with just body weight, and then 40% load on this back leg. Um, in addition to that, what's cool about this is that for people like myself that have some um, lumbar issues or issues with uh, pelvic obliquity or we can get crazy with it, but basically like pelvis wants to rotate on one, we're going to not go there. Basically your pelvis <laughs> is wonky. <laughs> we'll go down a rabbit hole of like talking mechanics and shit. And, and yeah. Can you terrible. demo with a kettlebell or something? Oh yeah. I'm going to demo. Okay. But, um, Sorry. <laughs> So the cool excited. thing about this for squatting for people is that people that usually have some low back discomfort while squatting with a regular bilateral stance, mm -hmm. if we put them in a sprinter stance, it kind of it neutralizes the pelvis and it can kind of eradicate uh, any of those issues that make them put pressure on that lumbar spine when they squat. Did I say that okay, Ben? Yeah. Okay. No, it makes so sense. It kind of neutralizes the pelvis. So yes, we we'll, we will do some with loading. So we'll take a little uh, gumball right here. So if we're doing don't a try that at squat, home. huh? Yeah. I said don't try that what at if home. I hit myself in my head. Oh god. Outtakes. 
Facebook Live. Sarah, Sarah needs a face transplant. <laughs> oh, babe. I just hit myself in the eye. Oh. That's going to leave a mark. That's okay. okay. So look, goblet position for a load, okay, is this position right here. We've got the load in the front of the body. So what's cool about this is that it makes, it's making your body want to do this, right? So that you have to like brace and use a lot of this good stuff. So this is goblet position. I like to grab the bell this way. You can also grab it this way, okay? It's really preference. What you want to make sure that you do though, and again, like, well, in group training, was it group training yesterday where I was like, I don't have oh, moves, so I right. can put my elbows down. Yes. So you want to get your elbows as much underneath the belt as you can, mm -hmm. okay? It's not unlike if you, for those of y'all that are familiar with doing barbell work, front rack position on a clean, you want to get your, your elbows underneath the weight. So if you've got a dumbbell, let me grab a dumbbell just to show. Because I know more of y'all probably have dumbbells at home. You're going to goblet hold it this way. Okay, so we can do a lot of stuff with this. We did goblet loaded marching in the group workout yesterday. Okay. Um, so, going back to what Shan was suggesting that I demonstrate. Sprinter stance, goblet loaded squat. We're essentially going here. Okay, so I'm driving through this front foot, through the whole foot. I'm pushing hard into the ground, as well as with the ball of this back foot. I'm not trying to like go on my toes or go on my heel or do any crazy nonsense like that. Like back in the day, we would actually cue clients to lift your toes up and sit back on your heels and bullshit like that, which really takes away from your ability to push and create force through the ground with your entire foot. Because if you think about it, if you crinkle your toes up in your shoe, like I wear a six and a half, but if I crinkle my toes up, I'm effectively making my foot maybe a size six instead of a six and a half. So we're decreasing the surface area. Mm -hmm. If yeah. Michelle's watching, she'll yeah. appreciate yeah. this. But um, so I just showed a goblet, goblet hold. You could also do a sprinter stance with the kettlebell if you've got one. In the front leg side, which makes it a little bit different because the weight's pulling us this way, so we're having to use a lot of this good stuff, obliques and all that, to keep us from going into lateral flexion. We can also load the back leg side, Air. which changes the game up a little bit too. So you see how we layer kind of some variation? So I basically just took a squat, which most people do here, and load it maybe here or dumbbells here or even here at home. So you could take that same dumbbell squat and load it here, here, but do it with a sprinter stance, okay? You could even, if you have one dumbbell, just like I did with the kettlebell, take your dumbbell, put them up here at your shoulder and load it this way. You could hold it this way too, I tend to go here, but do it more of a front load Okay, so that's kind of similar to a front rack position. With so the when you did on that side, you put your other arm out for to counterbalance. Very good. Yeah. So your front front. Ooh. So if we're loading, yeah, whichever way we do it, if we're unilateral loading is what we call it. So kettlebell, dumbbell, whatever. You could sandbag. Um, whichever arm is your free arm. What I like to do is, and this is a cue that I got from Char, uh, Charlie Weingroff of. Training equals rehab, rehab equals training, one and two, and various other, he's a, he's a brilliant dude. Um, Allie Gilbert's pups, so Mr. Allie Gilbert. But uh, basically the cue that he uses, or used to use, he may not still do it, but I don't like this one though. It's like you're reaching out and you're grabbing somebody by the collar and pulling them down. So, but you're not bending your elbow. You're gonna grab and pull in towards your body. So you see how I kind of take my arm mm -hmm. and do that? Mm -hmm. So I'm creating tension that's called a radiation. So essentially, any time that we have the load on one side, if this other side is just kind of like do -do 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 loose, um, it's, it makes sense to say that, that things aren't going to be happening in an optimal manner, as if we created more tension here and really got the body tight. Because what's happening is we're pulling all the muscles together to work as a unit. Okay, so during this time of the pandemic, if you're watching the news, which we all are, the analogy that they're using is that we're going to war, we're on the front lines, 
you know, bless the, the doctors and nurses and everyone in the health community that's working on this, but they are literally going to war with this coronavirus. So bringing that back to what we're talking about, <laughs> um, when you, when you bring all of your muscles in together and tighten up your body and use everything together, it's effectively like you're bringing, like you're putting together an army. Yeah, like everything's working power. together. Exactly. Yeah. So there's strength in numbers. It so, makes sense. Yeah. So, um, so sprinter stance. Okay, so look, we can squat with sprinter stance. We can also take sprinter stance and do, we did this in group training yesterday, streaming, a bent over row. So, Typically, most people will go bent over row here, which is great. We're gonna sit back in the hips, so bilateral stance would be here. I'm just showing with one dumbbell. Typically, the progression goes that you would go with two dumbbells first, and then move to kind of an alternating arm this way, and then move to more of a seesaw, which is this action, and then take away one dumbbell and go to one dumbbell. So what we're doing is we're creating, uh, we're creating loading on the body by making the body have to resist forces in um, different planes of movement, so to speak, to keep it from getting too complicated. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can take that one arm row and do it in a sprinter stance. So from here, I'm going to sit back into my hips. My back is flat. When you do a bent over row, you want to try to get your torso as close to parallel with the ground as possible. If you're up here, Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're trying to work against gravity. So you want to sit back and load the hips. Get this side tight if we're going with one dumbbell. And then row in this position here. Okay? Yes, you can use a kettlebell. I actually prefer kettlebells for one-arm rows because there's less bulk to it. I like that the weight's, like, distributed straight down. That's just me. It's not saying it's better, you know, or whatever. It's just preference. It fits better within kind of the configuration of things. So sprinter stands for one arm rows. Again, you can go two arm, alternating arm, seesaw, and then one arm. We can do that, of course, with an ultimate sandbag. Um, I don't want to get too carried away right here. I figure most of you all have a dumbbell or kettlebell at home. So here's one little tip that I thought about because I worked, for cl uh, worked with clients in their houses basically from anywhere from probably about 2000 up until 2012 or 13. Um, here in Baton Rouge, that was basically all I did for a while along with my boot camp groups outside. So I, beca I be became very good at MacGyvering things. We would make do with whatever my clients had in their houses. So if a client only had like a pair of lighter dumbbells, what you can do, and it's a simple thing, and it's one of those things where you might be like, why didn't I think of that? But let me grab the other one and I'll show you. Do you have anyone hopping in online? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Angela, Brent. I know. I'm sorry. So you can take your pair of dumbbells and hold them in one hand, okay? I don't have big hands, so if you've got big mitts, you're going to have a little bit easier time doing this. But this effectively, Shan hands. Yeah. This effectively gives me 20 pounds instead of just a single 10-pound dumbbell. And it makes you look really cool, too. Right. See what I'm saying? So look, it looks like skull and crossbones. It does. So that's an easy way to make do with what you have at home. And here's another bonus. I know I started talking about stances and whatever, but I'm just thinking out loud. If you've got a band at home of any sort, if you want to make a dumbbell heavier, you can, I don't know if that'll be the best band to use. Try to go light. So you could put this sucker under your foot oh. and hold it with your dumbbell, see? So then that way, you know, you can choke up on it, whatever. It may not be the right amount of tension. It's probably not going to be what I want to demonstrate, but you can see how yeah. that's going to give you. Obviously, it's flopping at the bottom, but you can adjust it so that you're getting a little bit more of resistance as you come up, okay? Obviously, that's only giving you resistance on the way up and not on the way down. So that brings me, man, I can, let's <laughs> save that. I was going to say we could, we could adjust the tempo. I'll talk about that in another video because that's a huge asset to those of y'all that are working out at home. Even for body weight exercises, adjusting how fast you do things, slowing things down, makes them exponentially harder. So going back to what I was here for today, we talked about sprinter stance, 
we can progress from sprinter stance. So, yeah, so for sprinter stance, we can row. We can also overhead press, okay? Yes, we can press on this other side. This is a little bit more stable than this back leg. And also, too, the sprinter stance is cool because it's making me be a little bit more, I'm more stable here. This is kind of venturing into more of a balance mm -hmm. challenge, okay? So, thought process continues that if you bring your foot back further, we're going to be a little bit more, um, there's more of a tendency to do that. So, if you're doing like an overhead press, you're thinking about driving down into the ground to press up. That's the cue that I love. Press down to press up, okay? Um, and then from there, if you wanted to get really crazy, you could move on to a single leg or whatever Ooh, um, from there. Fancy. Yeah. So So options are endless oh, for yeah, squats. The whole point of this video is maybe expose to you some to you guys out there some ideas of creating variation without having to use a ton of equipment. So you already have stuff to use. I mean if you don't have dumbbells or kettlebells, fine. Like I mean you can use a milk jug, fill it with water, um, a detergent um, oh, that's a good idea. bottle. Like the big things from Costco, cat like the plastic cat litter with a handle, like whatever. Um, but yeah, like if that's too light to use for a regular way of doing something, you could go to these more crazy stances and get more out of it. Yeah. That cool? Cool. We're gonna peace out. We're gonna peace out. Okay, so thank y'all for tuning in. Yay. We'll check y'all later. Bye. Bye.